Hello, and welcome to today's Safety and Health webcast using dual sensor technology in your gas detector, why two are safer than one, sponsored by Industrial Scientific. My name is Kyle Morrison. I'm the Senior Associate Editor with Safety and Health Magazine, and I'll be moderating today's session. Thank you for joining us. We'll start the presentation in a few minutes, but first I'd like to go over some housekeeping items. The views of the speaker and his organization are his own and do not necessarily reflect those of the National Safety Council or Safety and Health Magazine. Mention of any commercial enterprise, product, or publication does not mean the council or the magazine endorse them. At the end of today's webcast, we'll have a question and answer session. To ask a question, simply type it in the text box located in the lower left-hand corner of your screen, then click the Submit Question button. You can feel free to ask a question at any point during the presentation. You don't have to wait for the Q&A session to begin. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can, but we may not get to them all. However, any unanswered questions will be forwarded on to today's speaker. For basic troubleshooting information, please click the Help button located on your screen. At the end of the webcast, you'll be asked to complete a short evaluation survey, and I'll talk a little bit more about that after the presentation. This webcast will be archived for three months, so you can access it after today's live presentation. Within about a day, just simply return to this URL to access the recorded webcast. Okay, with that, I think we're ready to begin. Our speaker today is Dave Wagner. Dave is the Director of Product Knowledge and the INET Product Manager at Industrial Scientific. With more than 20 years of experience in the development and application of portable gas monitoring instruments and systems, Dave is a unique source of gas detection information. Dave? Thanks, Kyle, and, and thank you all for attending. It's great to be with you today, and I want to give a special note of, of thanks to Kyle and the National Safety Council and Safety and Health Magazine for giving us the opportunity to, to talk with you a little bit uh, about gas infection today and some new technology and, uh, and where the industry is progressing. So if you've been with uh, me on any of my previous webinars, um, you know that I have started off with one particular quote, and, and it's one that I like a lot. I actually stole this, as you can see, from IBM during the Masters Golf Tournament on a television broadcast a year or two ago, uh, and it really struck me because it's what we're talking about a lot with regard to gas detection. It says, having data is one thing. Knowing what to do with it is another game. And that is really true. Uh, we are working a lot with customers from, uh, from Industrial Scientific on understanding data and seeing the value in data that comes along with a gas detection program. And knowing what to do with that data and how to use it really does change the game. But I'm not going to talk to you today about that data in terms of being a user of gas detection. I'm going to talk to you more about that data today in terms of a manufacturer and how a manufacturer like Industrial Scientific has used that data and the data that we collect from customers to really change technology and, and make a difference in gas detection. And what that data has, has given us, the realization that we've gotten from gas detection today, data today um, is, is this fact, that 1 plus 1 is equal to 85. Now, you're probably thinking right about now that you have some really, really good data that they're using there. But uh, if you're in your um, mid to late 40s to early 50s, when you went to, to grade school, you asked your parents for your homework, your, your mother always told you about the new math. I can't help you because that's the new math. Well, today I'm really going to tell you about the new math, and 1 plus 1 is equal to 85, and we'll see just how that happens. So I would be very remiss if I did any talk with regard to gas detection and I didn't talk about the importance of bump testing a gas monitoring instrument, which is really fundamental to this conversation and to this topic today. The only way that you know that your gas detector is working properly and is able to detect gas is to test it with gas. That is, is just the way it is. I said it. I believe it. 
you should you should too because it is an undisputable fact the only way that you know that your gas detector is able to detect gas is to test it with gas and that is really uh, with respect to any technology any particular sensing technology that is used in a portable gas monitor if the gas can't get to the sensor for whatever reason, if the sensor's broken, the only way you will know is to test it with gas. Um, that's just the way it is. It's fundamental. It, it, it's just simply a fact, and we're going to, to talk more about that today. But here, this graph represents the reality of bump testing and what really happens in the real world today in terms of bump testing gas monitoring instruments. And, and you can see from this graph that days between uh, bump test and actual use on the x-axis and the percentage of the fleet that is actually bump tested on the y-axis. And very clearly you can see uh, that as time goes out, um, more and more of uh, gas monitors, or as, as the days increase, that is the rate at which instruments are bump tested. Now, the reality is that recommendations are that gas detectors should be bump tested every day before each use. We know that the average number of days on an interval between um, bump tests is 52. And we can tie some more very hard numbers to that fact. We did a study of uh, roughly 25,000 gas monitoring instruments uh, in 2008 and 2009, and we found through that study that 20% of those instruments were actually bump tested prior to each day's use, just, just 22, 20%. As I said, on average, it was 52 days but 15% of the instruments in that 25,000 were bump tested at intervals greater than 90 days or not at all, and most of those n not at all. So 15% of the gas detectors in the field are used without ever testing them, carried every day, used without ever testing them to know that they actually work. So what happens, if, what happens if you don't bump test your gas detector prior to use? What are the consequences of not bump testing your gas detector prior to use? And, and they're high. And this, gas, this graph represents the reality of, of what goes on if you don't bump test your gas detector. And you can see on the x-axis, again, the, the frequency of bump testing in terms of days and on the y-axis what the, the number of failures are uh, per number of use days. And you can see um, if we bump test frequently, uh, the risk of failure is, is fairly high, but as we go out, uh, the risk of failure becomes greater and greater. And we can put some very hard numbers to this graph, and we can see from over 2 million bump tests, 2 million bump tests of gas detectors that we studied. Instruments bump tested daily have a one failure for every 1,200 use days. One failure for every 1,200 use days. So let me put that in perspective for you. If you have a fleet of 1,200 portable gas monitors and they're used on a daily basis, even bump testing those monitors every day, one of those instruments is going to fail. So if you skipped bump testing those that one day, one person in those 1,200 is at risk because of running into or encountering a gas concentration that's dangerous and having it not be detected potentially putting them in danger because their instrument is not working. One in 1,200 every day is going to fail. 
So now let's move that time scale out a little bit and say, well, we don't bump test our instruments every day, but we do bump test them once a month. Instruments bump tested every 30 days have a failure rate now in one in every 285. So if we bump test every day, our failure rate's one in 1,200. If we bump test every 30 days, our failure rate is one in 285. Or we can look at it by taking that same 1,200 instruments and we say now roughly three to four of those 1,200 instruments is going to fail every day. If we only bump test every 30 days, three or four of those instruments are going to fail every day, putting those people at risk. And here's the reality of that problem. If we, don't bump, if we only bump test every 30 days, we don't know when the instrument failed. Did it fail on day two, or did it fail on day 29? If you failed on day 29, you were exposed um, with the potential to, to have a, be carrying a non-functional instrument for just one day. If it failed on day two, you're carrying a non-functional instrument for the entire month, and you don't know. Instruments need to be bump tested every day, and I think the data bears that out. So why don't people bump test instruments more regularly? If it's so important, why don't people do it? Um, there are several aspects to why, several, education and training. People just don't know that they should bump test their instruments. They think they've spent money on a high-quality piece of equipment, which they have. The technology is very reliable. Um, it's not subject to failure from a technology point of view. They just don't know they, they should do it. And, and reality is that instruments don't fail because the technology is bad. They fail based on the environments and the conditions and the way they're used. The general population doesn't understand that the instrument will fail. They haven't been brought up to date with all the training. They're not hearing all the speak. They're not reading the papers. They're not privy to all of the information that has been flooded onto the market about bump testing of instruments. They just don't know they should. Many will tell you that bump testing is not functionally practical. We'll talk about our same fleet of 1,200 instruments. Many will tell you I have 1,200 instruments. They're scattered all over my facility. I have a large facility. It covers a number of acres, or I have instruments um, spread throughout the city on trucks, a, a number of different scenarios. It's just not practical for me to bump test and for our workers to bump test those instruments every day. And, and that may be true. Uh, it may, may be not be feasibly practical. There are a number of ways to bump test an instrument. There are small cylinders of gas that allow you to do it. There are docking stations that are portable that do it automatically. Uh, but still, many people will tell you, listen, it's just not practical for me to bump test my instruments on a daily basis, and, and I'm not going to do it. Then there's the third factor. It's not economically feasible. Bump testing costs money. It takes time. It's not economically practical or feasible for me to bump test my instruments. Well, and that very well may be true in some cases, but let's just give me some rough numbers. Uh, I've heard this a lot from people, and I thought, well, I need to share some numbers on what the cost of bump testing really is, and, and there is a cost. Um, so just a little while ago, I sat down with some numbers, and they're very conservative numbers with regard to how long it takes to bump test an instrument, how much calibration gas is used. And roughly speaking, if you have a fleet of 1,000 gas monitors, 
the cost associated with bump testing those instruments every day for a year, 365 days, is roughly $106,000. Now, that's going to vary somewhat between by the flavor of instrument um, and who you are. There's some vary, but var variance. But very roughly $106,000 to bump test 1,000 instruments every day for a year. It's real money. It is, in some respects, expensive. But that $106,000, I believe, pales in comparison to the cost of one serious accident or one fatality due to the failure of an instrument because it wasn't bump tested. So it's a, there's a cost, but it's a cost to doing it, but there's certainly a risk uh, that comes with not engaging in that cost. So those are the reality of why people don't bump testers. They don't know they should, it's not functionally practical, and it's not economically feasible. But we as a gas detection equipment manufacturer have a responsibility to try and keep people that don't bump test their instruments safe nevertheless. So how do we solve for these realities? How do we solve for the fact that People just will not bump test their instruments in, in many cases. And our solution to that is DualSense technology. DualSense technology is using redundant sensors of the same type in the same instrument to detect gas. Um, so we use, we use one sensor or two sensors, identical sensors, the same type, to produce one gas reading. And there are many, many, many examples of redundancy um, out in the world. Um, aircraft have redundant systems throughout. They have redundant control systems. They have redundant hydraulic systems. They have redundant engines. They can fly with one engine, but they fly better with two. As humans, we have two ears. We can hear better with, we can hear with one ear. We certainly hear better with two. We have two eyes, and this is the best example. We certainly have, can see with one eye, but we see better with two. And those, the two eyes that we have focus an image to produce just one visible picture. And that is the same way dual sense technology works in your gas detector. We have two redundant sensors. They're identical, the same type. They're used in the same instrument. And there's a proprietary algorithm for resolving the output from those two independent sensors, independently functioning, independently calibrated sensors, into one, just one gas reading. And many people would look at it and say, well, that's easy. You take two readings, you average them, you have one reading. No, it's not that way. It's much more, um, much more complicated from that. Um, there is an algorithm that looks at the response of the two sensors, how the two sensors are responding independently, and merges those two responses together into one gas reading. And from that one gas reading, you get the fact that one plus one equals 85. What does that mean? That means that roughly you are 85 times safer with two sensors in your instrument than you are with just one. Two are safer than one. So how does that math work? As I said, that's the new math. Um, your mother back in grade school didn't know how to do it. I'm going to teach you how today. And the best example of, of how this math works is just a simple three-digit lottery. We're all familiar with the three-digit lottery. We know our chances of winning a three-digit lottery and picking the right number um, at any given time are one in a thousand. And that's, that's very simple. We have three digits. The probability of picking any digit is 1 in 10. 
So 1 in 10 times 1 in 10 times 1 in 10 gives you 1 in 1,000. The odds are 1 in 1,000 that we're going to win that lottery. It's very simple math. We live it every day. We know it works, and we know it's true. Well, we can, we can apply that same mathematics to gas detection, and we call that the theory of tangonomics. And, and I'm going to tell you a lot more about tangonomics. So we know that the probability of failure of a sensor bump daily in an instrument, as we've already established from the data, is, is 1 in 1,200. So if the probability of failure of one sensor is 1 in 1,200 if it's bump tested every day, the probability of failure of two sensors bumped every day is 1 in 1,200 times 1 in 1,200, or 1 in roughly 1.4 million. So 1 in 1.4 million chance of failure of an instrument, of a two-sensor instrument, if it's bumped every day. Now let's translate that a little bit further down the line and go to that 30-day bump test interval. We know it was 1 in 285, the failure if we bump test an instrument every 30 days, and we now it's 1 in 285 squared, or 1 in 85,000. And you're saying, well, Dave, those are big numbers, and, and you've you got to be crazy. Um, I just don't believe that, and I don't see how that makes me 85 times safer. And you're right. Those are big numbers. And, and the practicality uh, of those numbers and probabilities of failure are that gas detectors have many failure modes. Um, a failure of the sensor is not the only failure mode that the instrument has. Uh, it's the most likely failure mode. It's by far the most common failure mode. And as you've seen in this study, at the time it was done, we had over two mo results of over 2 million bump tests uh, to be able to prove that and document that. And we have far more data than that today uh, that still holds true. But from this graph, on the top line, we see the failure rate with regard to the bump test frequency and bump test interval of a single sensor instrument on the bottom line of a dual sense instrument. And the gap in between is the practicality of tangonomics. So the probability of failure of a single sensor instrument bump tested daily is 1 in 1,200. The probability of failure of a dual sense instrument, an instrument with two redundant sensors bump tested every day, is roughly 1 in 100,000, not 1.4 million, roughly 1 in 100,000 if you take into account all the failure modes of the instrument outside of the sensors themselves. If we translate that out to every 30 days, single sensor instrument bumped every 30 days, probability of failure is 1 in 285. A dual sense instrument bump tested every 30 days has a probability of failure, again, with all failure modes taken into account, of roughly 1 in every 22,000. And if you look at that and go back to our graph, the gap in between uh, those lines, on average, is about 85. So you are roughly 85 times safer with two sensors than you are with one. So how is tangonomics brought to reality? What, how do we recognize and put tangonomics to use? And in the first place we've put uh, tangonomics to use and put dual sense technology to use is in our Tango single gas monitor. Uh, the Tango was introduced in, to the market in April of this year. It is a solution for people who are not bump testing instruments on a regular basis to keep them safer. It will detect COH2S, NO2, or SO2 um, using dual sense technology and employing the fact that one plus one is equal to 85. 
So regardless of what your bump test policy is, whether you bump test instruments every day, whether you bump test instruments uh, once a week or once a month, or never bump test your instruments at all, regardless of what your actual policies and practices are, you are at least 85 times safer when you're carrying a dual sense monitor than when you're carrying any other single gas monitor available on the market. So one plus one does equal 85. Dual sense technology is a key breakthrough in the gas detection industry today. And without question, two is safer than one. And with that, I'm going to hand things back to Kyle, and uh, we'll open up the floor for any questions that you may have. Great, Dave. Thank you for that fantastic presentation. Uh, before we dive into the Q&A, I just wanted to remind everybody of the short evaluation survey I mentioned at the, at the top of the presentation that we're asking you to complete. The survey should be showing up on your screen now, and we're hoping that, that you take the time um, to fill it out and let us know your thoughts. Your input, uh, what you tell us in this survey is important because it helps improve future webcasts. So please do take, out, take the time to, to fill out the survey. If you don't see it popping up on your screen, uh, make sure that your pop-up blocker is turned off. Okay, with that, I, I want to get to some questions. Um, Dave, I, I was hoping you could clear something up a little bit. You, you talked a lot about, um, you know, the importance of bump testing, and, and then you talked about how dual sense technology, you know, it, you get that it's 85 times more safer. But um, does dual sense technology mean that there's no need to, bu to bump test an instrument? That's a great question. And, and, and as I said, dual sense technology was developed to, to face the reality that that people in many cases just don't bump test their instruments and and we have to deal with that the fact that you have dual, te dual sense technology in an instrument doesn't mean you shouldn't bump test it you are always going to be safer and if you want to maximize your safety regardless of whether the instrument has one sensor in it two sensors or or five sensors Bump testing that instrument before each day's use is always going to make you the safest and put you in the safest condition, and, and it is the best thing to do. If you do not bump test your instrument, an instrument with dual sense technology is always going to keep you safer or always going to put you in a safer condition than you would be if you just had, had an instrument with just one sensor. So, so we're not saying, well, you don't have to bump test anymore. You should still bump test your instruments. If you don't, we're going to keep you safer. Now, along those lines, though, um, can you bump test less? I mean, if you have a, a piece of technology with, with dual sense, can you uh, say, well, you know, to save costs, let's not bump test every day, let's bump test every other day? Or, or still do you recommend still, even though you're using dual sense technology, let's still bump test every day? Well, we, we still recommend a, a daily bump test uh, in general. Um, we've relaxed our recommendations to some degree with, with dual sense technology, and, and we're, we're really recommending a sensor with, with an instrument with dual sense technology uh, be calibrated every 30 days, um, recognizing that you are, you are much, much safer with two sensors and to some degree, you can forego bump testing, uh, but certainly you, you are always safer and you will continue to be safer if you bump test before each use. Okay. Um, we had a question here. Uh, could you go over the average cost of a typical uh, bump test again? Sure. I, was, uh, I, I knew somebody would want the details of how I came up with that number. The, um, I said, if, if you recall what I said, I said that a fleet of 1,000 instruments um, bump tested every day would cost roughly a $106,000, and $106,000 per year. And I took um, a, a, a cost of calibration gas at um, a, a conservative cost to some degree, but a, low, a rather low cost of about 
cents per liter. Uh, knowing that the average bump test uh, takes a little bit uh, less than two cents or uh, two tenths of a liter per gas per bump test and a very, very, very conservative number in time in terms of how long it takes to perform a bump test at 10 minutes, which is an extremely conservative number. If I told you it was going to take 10 minutes to bump test your instrument, you'd probably tell me I was nuts and you were never going to do it. Nevertheless, in figuring, figuring out the cost in this way, that's the number that I used. And, and a cost of time of $30 per hour, and that works out to about $106,000 for a fleet of 1,000 instruments. And, again, uh, I, that number is very conservative, and it's probably pretty heavily overstated. So for, for a single instrument, that, that comes out to, and correct me if I'm wrong with my math, but that, that comes out to about $100 per instrument for a year of yep. daily bump testing. Absolutely. Okay, so when you re when you really break it down, it, it's not, you know, it's not a, a crazy large number. It's it's a relatively, uh, no. a relatively small number per instrument. No, it's certainly not an insane number. And in, in looking at it that way, just pure economic standpoint, as I said, it, it certainly pales in comparison to the cost of a fatality or serious injury. Okay, great. Um, and, and there's a few other questions that are coming in about um, bump testing, um, but before we get to those, I, I want to get to kind of a more general one. Can you describe uh, the process and the procedure for a bump test? Great question. How do you bump test an instrument? Well, bump te by definition, um, a bump test, or by industrial scientific definition at least, uh, a bump test of an instrument is just a brief exposure of the instrument and its sensors uh, to a concentration of gas uh, to verify that the sensors do respond and that the alarms are functional. So just a very brief exposure of gas. You see the sensors go up. You verify that the sensors function and that uh, the alarms go off. The instrument's good to go. It's really a go-no-go -no -go type of test, and it is by no means a measure of how accurately the instrument's performing, whether it is calibrated properly. It's a go-no-go no go test that says that if I walk into an environment and there's a gaseous concentration that may put me in danger, the instrument is going to detect it, respond to it, and, and keep me safe. Uh, the procedure is very simple. It can be done automatically by in just placing an instrument on a docking station that delivers the gas, uh, measures the sensor response, and determines that it passed. Or it can be done in a completely manual mode by using a cylinder of gas, a regulator, um, a piece of tubing and a calibration cup, or some type of adapter to the instrument. Uh, turning on the gas for a few seconds and just verifying visually that the sensors respond and, and the instrument's functional. Very, very simple test to do. Now, what happens um, to that instrument if it fails the bump test? Should it be then pulled out of service? Does it have to be replaced? I mean, what's the procedure then for that specific instrument in a fail? Uh, absolutely. If an instrument fails a bump test, um, it should be taken out of service until it's checked or, you know, further verified why and, and the problem is corrected. Most of the docking stations that, that do bump testing automatically will uh, do a bump test, perform a bump test, and if the, the bump test, the instrument fails the bump test on the docking station, that docking station will automatically revert to a calibration and recalibrate the instrument uh, to make sure that it is functional and everything is within compliance from a calibration perspective, and that will usually cure the bump test problem, bring the instrument back into spec, and it works. If there is a critical failure of the instrument that causes a, a failure of the bump test, when the instrument's calibrated, it will fail the calibration, and then it will have to be serviced further from there. Okay, great. Um, we got a question here regarding calibrated gas. What is the real risk of bump testing with expired calibrated gas? 
Um, and this individual says that they seem to waste a lot of calibrated gas because it is beyond the expiration date. That is a great question. Um, there is no true risk of, of bump testing an instrument, as far as I'm concerned, with expired gas. Uh, it is a practice that I think is becoming um, more and more prevalent, and it is a practice that I can tell you that industrial scientific is, is supporting now um, because it, it's a fail-safe condition. If the gas for some reason is expired and is, is the concentrations are no longer valid, the gas is no good, uh, the instrument will simply fail the bump test, in which case you want to do further work and get a good cylinder of gas and calibrate the instrument and, and verify that it is functional. So using expire, I don't see, uh, I see very little, if any, risk in bump testing an instrument um, with expired calibration gas. And, and I am taking that to the level that in our next release of our INET program software, it will, that software will allow you to designate a, a cylinder that has expired um, in conjunction with our docking stations to be used specifically for bump testing, but not for calibration. So, again, I, I see little to no risk in that at all. I'm sure our listeners are, are happy with that. That might save them some, some money in the long run there. Um, Absolutely, because the, the, it's a very good point that, that many users, especially users with smaller fleets, um, will, will have calibration gas expire before they use it all. Okay, great. Um, here's a question about the, the device itself. You know, and you're talking bump test every day for all your devices is your recommendation. Does bump testing reduce the life of the sensors? That's a, a, another very good question. And, and many people think and believe that, that bump testing does reduce the life of the sensors. And the reality of that is, um, no, that typically – uh, is not true. Most people believe that, well, the life of a sensor is directly proportional to the amount of gas that it sees or the amount of gas that it encounters. Uh, but with very few exceptions, uh, that is not the case. Uh, the, the life of a sensor generally is independent of the amount of gas it sees. That's not, as I said, that's not true for all sensors. Um, but it is true for most, and the, and the simple fact is for those sensors that it is true, the, the amount of life taking, taken from the sensor or the amount of life that is reduced in the sensor by, the performing, by performing a bump test is negligible. Okay, great. Uh, now we have some questions about um, identifying dual sense technology. Um, I'll, I'll go with the first one, the, the Ventus unit. Um, does that use dual sense technology? No, the Venice unit does not use dual sense technology. Dual sense technology right now is only in our Tango single gas instrument. We are looking at the potential down the road in the future of moving dual sense technology into the multi gas instrument line, into an instrument like the Ventus or the MX6. Uh, but we we do not have plans completed yet to do that. However, I, I believe you will see dual sense technology and multi gas instruments in the future. Okay. Well, along those lines, how, how does one uh, how is one able to tell whether or not the device they have has dual sensors? I mean, it, it will be marked in some way saying this is dual sense, or or how how will someone know? Well, it's very simple right now that uh, our Tango instrument again is the only instrument available with dual sense technology, and every Tango monitor has it. It's, it's a standard feature of that monitor. It's the only way that we build it. So only available in the Tango, and everyone has it. So, so knowing that the instrument has dual sense technology um, is very easy today. I would anticipate in the future that instruments um, like the Ventus or other multi-gas instruments that may be able to operate on dual sense technology or or on the traditional single sensors uh, will clearly tout whether or not they, they are dual sense capable or dual sense equipped. Okay. And I believe you may have mentioned it, but I, I just want to clarify for our readers. Um, 
you know, are there other brands out there that are using DualSense technology or, or, or something similar to DualSense technology where there's, there's two detectors in a single unit? Um, no. DualSense technology is, is a platform patented by Industrial Scientific. The Industrial Scientific uh, meters are the only instruments that have DualSense technology. Uh, there is the possibility for using redundant sensors in, in other instrumentation in some cases, uh, but you would get redundant gas readings. For example, the Industrial Scientific MX6 multi-gas instrument could have redundant oxygen sensors or redundant carbon monoxide sensors um, and, and a host of other redundant sensors in it um, filling up all of its sensor ports. But in that case, if we had redundant carbon monoxide sensors, which some customers do do, you would get two independent readings. The, the key behind dual sense technology is you are getting one, one proprietary reading from the two sensors. Okay, and that kind of leads to my, my next question. Why did Industrial Scientific choose to put the DualSense technology into a single gas instrument as opposed to, you know, just recommending, you know, users have two instruments? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, one thing that we hear every day from customers is, I don't want to carry two instruments. Uh, yet we, we do know of, of gas detection users that are, are out there today carrying, in some cases, redundant single gas monitors, um, just f for the same reason we have uh, two sensors and we, we develop dual sense technology in the first place. They're not confident with just having one instrument to protect them, so they carry two. The reason that we put dual sense technology in a single gas instrument first, as opposed to a multi-gas instrument, is that large fleets of instruments um, companies that are protecting high quantities of workers with a single gas instrument and large fleets of single gas instruments are typically the instruments where bump testing is neglected most. So we felt that, that dual sense technology as a starting point would provide the most benefit in a single gas instrument that is is more prone to being used without bump testing. Okay. Now, now the sensors um, in the dual sense technology equipment, are, are those sensors approved by CSA? The sensors, the, the Tango instrument itself is approved by CSA and another number of other agencies as well, like Underwriters Laboratory, and it's approved in, in Europe to the ATEC standards and a number of safety standards around the world. The sensors themselves are, are not necessarily uh, approved by CSA, but, but the instrument they are used in is, and the functionality of that instrument certainly is. Okay. Now, if the dual sense meter uh, is not bump tested, uh, again, you know, going back to uh, what you said earlier, that, you know, that, that users may not bump test for a variety of reasons, but let's take a, a dual sense meter. If it's not bump tested, what alarms or warnings will alert the user about the potential for failure? The, the, the Tango, and, well, instruments in general, um, some instruments have, have no warning whatsoever as to whether or not they've been, been bump tested or not. Some instruments have a, a bump test mode and they have a, a bump test alarm that has a default period of time attached to it. And if the instrument is not bump tested within that default time period or the selected time period, then it will give you an alarm and say that the instrument has not been bump tested. The Tango instrument works the same way. It has a, a bump test period and if it's not been bump tested within that period, you will get a warning and alarm that it hasn't, has not been bump tested if you choose to use that feature. The Tango also has a condition 
um, where it will tell you if there is a failure or a problem with one sensor or the other sensor in the instrument and or both sensors. And if there, for some reason, is a problem or a failure with one sensor in the instrument, uh, the Tango reverts to the single sensor mode and can continue to be used with one sensor um, with a warning to you provided on the instrument display that it is working in the single sensor mode. So another beauty of, of the Tango instrument and the DualSense technology is that if one sensor does fail while the instrument's in use for some reason, it has a redundant sensor to keep on working. It has a redundant engine that allows it to keep on flying. Okay. But, but even still, the, 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 it still remains the fact that the best way to, to determine whether or not uh, the, the, the meter is working properly or whether there is the potential for failure is, again, to do that daily bump test. Absolutely. You are always in the safest condition if you bump test your instrument before use regardless of how many sensors it has. Okay. Now, do you have, or does Industrial Scientific have dual sensors for quad monitors? We, as I said, we do not yet. Um, we are anticipating that that is going to happen in the future, but we, we do not have it available at this time. Okay. Are there, and you went over it uh, earlier, but could you go over again, you know, any, any plans to incorporate dual sense technology into other instruments? Sure. As I said, we're looking at that. Um, we're looking at the possibility for doing that. Uh, it's easier to, to employ a redundant sensors in some instruments than it is in, in others, and we certainly see the future of, of dual-sense technology moving into multi-gas instruments, uh, but it, it's not happening right away. Uh, there's some development work and projects that that we are looking at to get those sense technology to the multi-gas level, and I'm confident that we're going to be there. Uh, it's just not there yet. Okay, great, Dave. Uh, I think that wraps up our time here today. Um, I wanted to thank everybody who, uh, who, who sent in questions, and if there are any questions we did not get to, uh, they are going to be forwarded on to Dave, and he can respond to you. Uh, once again, I hope you take the time to fill out the evaluation survey um, that popped up on your screen and uh, as it helps us in future webinars. And with that, um, that concludes today's Safety and Health Magazine webcast. I would like to thank Dave, Industrial Scientific, and all of you who listened in. Thank you, and have a great day. Thanks, Scott.